Welcome back to Dr. Suchita's interactive class. Today we are going to see one of the thermal analysis technique that is thermometric titration. We are going to see in detail the principle, instrumental setup, advantages, disadvantages and applications of this thermal analysis technique. Before going through this particular topic of thermal analysis, I will request you to go through the basic concepts of uh, all other thermal analysis techniques like TGA, DTA, DSC on my channel. Thermometric titration. Now, if I look at the word titration, what actually it means? It is a technique where we are determining the concentration of unknown solution. We all are familiar that when we have done this uh, titration with burette, conical flask, at that time unknown solution or analyte we have taken in a conical flask and from the burette whose concentration is known like base which is added in the burette um, which reacts with the acid and we can able to find out the end point or neutralization point of this particular titration by utilizing indicator. Indicator indicates me completion of reaction by change in color. Now, the same titrant which is there in the burette, titer or analyte which is there in a conical flask, the same titration I can able to perform by using thermometric titration. The word thermo defines me change in heat or the heat generated during the titration. So, in thermometric titration, what we are going to find out? We are going to find out the end point by measuring the heat generated during the chemical reaction. This is uh, one of the technique where end point is accurately and precisely we can find out and interpret by finding out the change in temperature by uh, plotting a graph. The enthalpy change which is most fundamental and universal property of a chemical reaction. So, during observation temperature change is a natural choice in monitoring the progress of a reaction. Hence, this titration is also termed as enthalpy titration. Looking at the pre basic principle of this thermometric titration where like regular titrant, titer, we are going to find out, uh, we are going to add definite quantity of titrant from the burette and to the analyte which is kept at an adiabatic condition where we are going to find out the change in temperature by using thermocouple. This end point is nothing but an inflation in a curve generated due to the output obtained as an temperature measuring device. Like if both of them I kept at constant temperature and I will be measuring the change in temperature of the reaction mixture by thermocouple then the end point I can determine by plotting graph of temperature versus volume of titrant added from the burette where this inflation change in temperature this is the end point of your titration if the reaction is exothermic and this is the end point if the reaction is endothermic. We are going to find out in detail the thermometric titration curves too. Now, the completion of reaction. During the completion of reaction, it produces molar heat that is the delta H which can be measurable due to, due, by knowing the change in temperature. So, in an ideal system where no loss or no gain of heat due to environmental influences are involved. So, if I want to go in process, I just uh, have to have that there is no loss or gain. Um, of heat due to environmental influences are involved in the progress of the reaction. So, reaction itself gives me whether it gives me any absorption or evolution of heat. If it gives me exothermic reaction then you will get delta H negative and if delta H is positive then we can conclude that the reaction is endothermic. Now, if I want to perform this particular thermometric titration what basic condition I should have to have like during volumetric titration we have uh, we are following some basic condition that the reaction uh, should not go any byproduct it should be 
stable it should give me uh, same product or balanced equation reaction should be fast in the same way here we will have to follow some basic conditions like reaction must be carried out under adiabatic condition reaction should be takes place in a single step and heat of dilution of reaction should be negligible heat of dilution of reaction should be negligible so these are the basic conditions to follow to perform thermometric titration this is an instrumental setup of thermometric titration where you are having you are having this block of stylogram where this acts as an insulator it's it acts as an insulator this particular insulated beaker has been kept which contains your analyte this is an titrant this particular arrangement allows you from the burette to add a titrant into analyte this is an uh, motor driven stirrer where mixing the solution of analyte and titrant is possible and this particular thermistor or thermocouple is attached to viston bridge network which is very sensitive to measure the temperature difference of 0.1 0.2 degree celsius during the reaction process now while performing the titration what specific methodology i need to follow by choosing the analyte while choosing the particular titrant uh, while keeping the carrying out the reaction the amount of analyte which i have selected it should be in such a way that the volume of titrant needed to add during the reaction to measure the change in temperature should not exceed between 1 to 3 ml the change in temperature during equivalent amount of addition of titrant after every addition at least there should be change of 0.1 to 0.2 degree celsius and the volume of the titrant delivered delivered per minute that flow is maintained as 0.1 to 1 ml per minute so these are the basic condition that it at least show me a change in temperature with 0.1 to 0.2 degree celsius after addition of titrant 0.1 to 1 ml so equivalence point should be uh, in this particular range of 1 to 3 ml of a particular analyte when it reacts with your titrant so keep the concentration of reactant which is there 100 times greater than the reactant to uh, or analyte to avoid the volume correction or to minimize the temperature variation between the sample and the analyte so your titrant should be 100 times greater than uh, concentration with respect to your analyte the thermistor which we are going to able to measure the temperature it should have to have an accuracy up to 10 to the power minus 4 degrees celsius now when i am performing this thermometric titration which factors will affect my titration heat losses or gain from outside the system through the vessel difference in temperature between titrant and titer as titer um, titrant is there in the burette and titer or analyte is there in adiabatic beaker evaporative loss from the surface of the fluids when i am mixing or when the stirrer has been utilized the evaporative loss the heat of solution when titrant mixed with the analyte heat introduced due to the mechanical stirrer i am applying the stirring process so that the analyte and titrant should be get mixed due to that process due to that mechanical action does it provides or it does it introduce any uh, heat into your solution and heat produced by the thermistor itself so these are the small basic factors which will affect your titration when i am carrying out thermometric titration i am taking a titrant of number of moles specific number of moles i am taking analyte of definite moles which will produce a product of corresponding mole and completion of reaction produces molar heat that is delta h due to change in temperature so this is an ideal presentation of your thermometric titration we can consider where there are no losses or gain of heat due to environmental influences and the progress of the reaction is observed as increase in temperature or decrease in temperature yes we'll uh, interpret here the titration curves obtained during thermometric titration once we have performed the titration we'll have a data of 
ml of titrant added and the change in temperature. So, we will plot a data change in temperature versus ml of titrant added and if the reaction is exothermic then what happens that the temperature increases after every addition of titrant to the analyte and it will reach to the highest temperature till your analyte is present in the conical flask and it is reacting with your titrant added from the burette. Once whole analyte is utilized it will show decrease in temperature with excess of addition of reagent or the titrant from the burette. Extrapolation of these straight lines will give me end point of the exothermic titration. Similarly, when I am performing any titration where the data obtained is plotted in the same way as change in temperature versus ml of titrant added and if it shows me decrease in temperature for every addition of titrant from the burette to analyte then it will be an pattern of exothermic endothermic reaction where decrease in temperature is observed and this decrease in temperature is observed till my analyte is there in the conical flask which will react with the titrant from the burette. Once whole analyte is utilized to convert it into product then excess of addition of titrant from the burette will give me little bit increase in temperature or it may remain constant. Extrapolation of these straight lines gives me end point of a titration. Now, when I am I want to interpret uh, the titration curves, sometimes I may get the titration curve of different nature. Now, how it is possible for me to interpret this particular curve obtained after titrating uh, boric acid with strong base like NaOH. I am titrating boric acid with strong base like NaOH. What is happening? This is an titration plot obtained where change in temperature versus volume of titrant added in microliters has been provided to you. Now, the plot is obtained, the nature of the plot you can see clearly in this particular pink color image. Look at each and every point. This point A is the beginning point where it shows little bit decrease and you may think that it will be an endothermic reaction. So, beginning the, uh, at the beginning temperature is little bit decreased. This line AB is a stress uh, temperature of solution before addition of titrant is point A and after addition of little bit titrant AB slope is excess of transfer of heat, excess of transfer of heat uh, between solution and surrounding. We can interpret this particular AB line as excess of transfer of heat between solution and surrounding. Now it is showing increase in temperature gradual uh, from point B to C. So this is an evolution of heat exothermic reaction and at point C where again whole analyte or boric acid has been utilized and excess of addition of NaOH shows me this point C to D little bit down slope as an again decrease in temperature. So linear extrapolation of this particular uh, uh, graph from CD and from BC I can find out this end point of a titration at point C. So this is your delta T difference in temperature. This particular delta T has been utilized to find out the enthalpy of a reaction. Yes, here I have tried to show you exothermic as well as endothermic uh, reaction simultaneously to uh, find out uh, the progress of reaction and end point during the titration. When these are both of them uh, we can call it as enthalpograph where uh, we are finding out the enthalpy change. If enthalpy change is negative this is an baseline. This, uh, if enthalpy change is negative when this particular graph represents you exo and endothermic curves. When enthalpy is negative, delta H is less than 0, means the system is releasing heat. <coughs> this is called exothermic reaction and when enthalpy is positive, delta H is greater than 0, the system shows me endothermic reaction. Plot A, upper, upper, upper part, the plot A is for exothermic and plot B is for endothermic reaction showing starting of the titration and progress of the reaction to find out 
equivalence point or end point. So, I can find out this B dash as equivalence point, here again B dash as an equivalence point and delta T the change in temperature I can utilize to find out enthalpy of both of these reaction. Hope you have understood how to uh, calculate how to grab the data from these thermometric curves. So, I can perform this thermometric titration in different types of titration like acid base or neutralization titration, redox titration, complexometric titration, precipitation titration and miscellaneous methods here uh, defines you titration of fluoride with boric acid, determination of formaldehyde, thermometric titration of water etc. So, looking at the broad application of this thermometric titration where I can find out the delta H value. Here further the same type of pattern has been shown with respect to uh, the titration where I can find out the end point. Here I have tried to show you uh, how to extrapolate the line and this arrow shows me the end point in both the cases. This is an end point in both the cases which is very simple to understand this is strong acid strong base titration. Again we are looking forward in detail with respect to strong acid strong base titration where our aim is to find out the heat of neutralization of fully dissociated acid with base. So, we have utilized strong acid and strong base. Strong is the word described or attached when dissociation observed is complete dissociation. So, whatever completely dissociated acid and base when they react, we can find out standard enthalpy of reaction using standard enthalpy of formation. The reaction is exothermic. The reaction is exothermic as increase in temperature is observed during the process where acid is utilized to form a neutral product like salt and water and excess of addition of base shows me this part C D where I can find out by extrapolation of these two points the uh, equivalence point. So, this particular information of finding out the standard enthalpy uh, for formation of water and by knowing by, uh, for OH minus science I can easily find out uh, the enthalpy for fully dissociated acid. So, this is an application and industrial application for interpreting the uh, compounds or the um, acids and bases which are directly and accurately reacts because of their reaction. Thermometric titration, interpretation of curve with the weak acids like formic acid and citric acid we have taken an example over here which reacts with the strong base like NaOH. Now, this interpretation of weak acid with strong base uh, by considering formic and citric acid the curve interpret me that increase in temperature is observed when it is forming it is uh, giving me a product with respect to reaction of formic acid and NaOH and when completion of reaction is there it should inflation in the temperature. So, this is an end point in case of citric acid and formic acid weakly dissociated acids. Still we can find out sharp end point due to thermometric titration. When we are performing a titration uh, like complexometric titration where calcium and magnesium we can titrate with EDTA. This simple titration you might have done with your uh, graduation studies where you have uh, titrated calcium and magnesium that is the hard water with EDTA by utilizing pH 10 buffer and erichrome black tea indicator where wine red to uh, blue coloration tells you the completion of reaction. Same titration if I perform with thermometric titration how it is possible for me to find out the enthalpy or heat of chelation during formation of complex with calcium and magnesium with EDTA. So, separately we can find out their chelation capacity. So, this is a thermometric titration where sodium and magnesium has been utilized to titrate with EDTA. This titration is carried out with a concentration 1 mole per liter and the amount of the concentration of the titrant which has been utilized is 0.25 moles per liter. Now, when I am performing the titration increase in temperature is observed when your EDTA reacts with calcium and it will again show decrease in temperature when excess of addition of your titrant is there and of which will be forming complex with magnesium completion of formation of 
complex with calcium and magnesium when it is over then excess of addition of EDTA shows me constant temperature. So, this point B and C we can find out and consider as equivalent point of calcium and equivalent point of magnesium. So, that is the beauty of this titration I can separately find out the equivalence point of calcium and magnesium and again I can find out the enthalpy change during the titration. Thank you. Hope you have understood basic principle, difference between volumetric titration, thermometric titration, basic conditions, applications, how to interpret the curve. Thank you.